Hey guys, what's up? Lewin here at GarageBand and Beyond. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be teaching everyone out there how to properly set up the input gain control on whatever interface it is that you have at home. I'm going to be using my Focusrite Sapphire Pro 24 DSP for the demonstration as well as this Shure Beta 58. You might have already noticed that the audio does not seem to be coming through this microphone. That's because you are correct. Um, it's coming through the Canon T2i here behind me. Uh, so I'm trying to speak loudly so you can hear me properly and I really hope this all works. Um, but anyway, that's what's going on. Now, the first thing you need to understand is the control on your interface, that input control is not only turning up the gain to the microphone, but also the signal to your computer, okay? So that's number one. The second important thing that you're looking for while you're setting up your gain control is the loudest event in whatever it is that you are recording. So if you're recording vocals, drums, guitars, you're just looking for the loudest moment in that performance, and you're gonna use that moment you just have the singer sort of repeat that over and over, uh, or at least something of equal volume uh, to set up your control. You're gonna use that as the ceiling. Now, in when I make these GarageBand and Beyond videos, the first thing I say is, hey guys, what's up? Lou in here at GarageBand and Beyond, right? I say it every time. Uh, so the hey guys part for me is always the loudest part of the speech that I give, you know, twice a week over here. Um, so that's what we're gonna use, right? So I'm just gonna reach over here. This Beta 58 is plugged into input number one. So we're just gonna start turning it up and, uh, you know, working around the loudest event of my speech. So I'm gonna go, hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, check, check, hey, hey. And even when I say check, it's basically at the same, I'm trying to make it at the same volume as, hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, hey. So somewhere around there should probably be good. Hey guys, hey, hey, okay, good. So now you can see that it's bouncing up to the orange light, hey, hey which is a little bit of the red if I really push it. Um, but the orange light represents negative three dB, which is, you know, a nice happy place for you to be living. Um, and when I speak, I'm getting a couple of blips on the meter, which is just telling me that it's getting a signal, which is good. Now you might've noticed at the top, there was one little light beeping there, blinking there. Um, but if I tried to record that signal, it would have been totally useless, okay? Um, so anyway, this is what we're looking at now. Hey guys, hey, check, check, check. Okay, so you can see that it did peak there. Let's go ahead and just hit record on GarageBand and see what's going on signal strength wise. Hey guys, what's up? Lewin here at GarageBand and beyond. Hey guys, what's up? Lewin here at GarageBand and blah, blah, right? Okay, so, <laughs> all right. So there you can see, let's go back to the second time I said it. Now, even the second time that I said it, it probably did, it did go red over here on the interface, but it didn't actually clip very much on the recording side, okay? So I will say this, if it happens a little tiny bit, you're probably gonna be okay. You won't hear the distortion if it's like, if it happens once or twice through an entire thing, um, don't worry about it. But if you see those events hitting the edges, I mean, you know, GarageBand users, we're, we're just talking about the edges here, but um, if you're going, you know, plus or minus 100 dB, you, you are distorting your thing and uh, you don't wanna see that happening a lot. You can see it happening here at the bottom. Um, but yeah, you just don't want that happening all the time, right? But you also, on the other end of it, don't want there to be too little signal. So at this point, I need to start discussing what is called the signal to noise ratio. Now, this is something you might've heard me talk about or other people talk about. So hopefully uh, you've heard of this term and don't really understand it. So let's come down here and look at this. When we're talking about signal, we're talking about anything that's here, that the white stuff, the recorded stuff here, this is the signal, okay? Anything above it, this is the quote unquote noise, okay? This is the simplest way for you to think about it. So we're looking for a good balance between the two of them. You know, you can call it 50-50. Now, of course, this is an actual noise noise. Um, uh, it depends on your equipment and your room and all this kind of stuff. But if the signal amount was too low, then the ratio of noise to signal would be off. And if you had that across every single recording, the noise then compounds and you get a lot of noise, right? If it happens on one track, uh, you have too little signal and a lot of noise, and then everything else is well recorded, you will have a really hard time getting the low signal recording loud enough over everything. That's why it's important to just use this 
uh, method on every single thing that you record so you get the proper signal strength on everything, okay? Uh, if one, like I said, if one's too little, you're never gonna have a good time getting it to compete with all the good recordings. So that's the deal with signal to noise ratio and that's basically the lesson on how to set up your interface control knob. Um, just remember, you're looking for the loudest event and that's what you're working around. Um, and that's, that's it, okay? So now, GarageBand 10 users, I'm talking specifically to you. This control, right here, this volume fader has no control over the input signal while you are recording. The only thing that this control does while you're recording is control the monitor input level. So I'm talking about your headphones or your speakers if the person's in the other room or you know if you're playing electric guitar direct or something. Um, so you know just to prove my point I'm gonna turn this all the way down and let's just delete this and I'm gonna hit record. So now, as I record with that volume all the way down, you can still see that plenty of signal is coming into the computer regardless of this control, okay? So that just sort of proves my point. And now, last thing I'm gonna say if for GarageBand 10 people, uh, go up here. If you don't know how to turn your monitors on, I've recently discovered that some people have a hard time with this. Go up to the track menu at the top, come all the way down to track header, Yours will say show input monitoring button because mine is already open, it says hide. Um, but that is that. Now the other thing that I've noticed a couple times, and a lot of you might be curious about this, but this part actually stretches out. If you have it too closed down, you lose stuff, right? So you just watch the volume go away and the pan control. A lot of times people are like, what happened to my pan control? What happened to my pan control? Just grab it here, stretch it out, relax. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> um, all right, so you guys, I think that about covers everything that I needed to discuss today. And I really hope that the audio is not awful because it's coming in through the Canon T2i. Perhaps I should have used something else. Uh, but anyway, um, I hope that's it, and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below, and of course, please check out all the other videos that I made here on GarageBand and Beyond. There's lots and lots of them. I've been doing this for a very long time, and uh, I appreciate it when people subscribe, like, share, you know, thumbs up, all of that stuff. These videos, it really helps my channel grow, and I love it that you guys are willing to help me do that. So you guys, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next Tuesday, all right? Peace.